So how do you edit a landscape snapshot into a moody, misty scene using simple Lightroom techniques? Let's find out. You can see that this image is dominated by reds and greens, which just so happens to be complementary colors. So we're going to take advantage of that. I'll begin in my usual way of desaturating all of the individual colors. And if you're interested in why I do this, I have an entire video dedicated to this topic, which I'll link to up here or in the description. Now all of the color has gone, you'll notice that we've almost completely lost that telephone box. There is no contrast between it and the surrounding objects. It was quite a flat day when I took this shot about 10 years ago. And this is where we're going to use color and contrast separation. Let's introduce quite a lot of blacks. Shadows can come down a touch. Highlights restore detail in the sky. Let's introduce a graduated filter to darken down the foreground. About minus two stops should do it. And blacks around minus 10. Now we can bring back some specific colors to bring focus to the main subject. Obviously red will make that phone box come to life. Oranges there are some in the buildings and actually some present in the phone box too. So we can't eliminate them all together. Let's leave about 10%. Now yellows will be present in the foliage, but again, a desaturated look is going to fit that moody misty scene a lot more. Let's settle on minus 75 for each. And the rest we simply don't require because green and red will be our two complementary colors. Luminance, I think the phone box is too bright, so I'll reduce that down to minus 35. Same too with the yellows and greens. And one more alteration to the hue of those yellows and greens to make it less yellowy. Here's a before and after, and already that started to look more moody. Time to bring some attention onto the main subject, the telephone box. Let's create a new mask and choose objects. Make sure we're on the rectangle selection tool and draw around the object. And Lightroom has done a pretty decent job here. Now we can add a fair amount of clarity to make the phone box pop. But we need to counteract that grungy texture, which will occur with overuse of this clarity tool. Now, before we add that mist effect, I'm going to color grade the image by adding some blues into the shadows. And let's push those shadows even further using the luminance slider. Quick before and after, looking really cinematic now. How about adjusting the white balance to really enhance that filmic look? Okay, now for the fun part. Creating a new mask and object once again. Repeat that same process. But if we zoom in, you will notice that it's not a perfect selection on the edge of the phone box. And we need to fix that before we can continue or the effect will have some pretty nasty fringing. So let's choose subtract on that mask and pick the brush tool. Making sure that the flow and density are at 100% and importantly, auto mask is checked. We can run the tool along the edge with a smallish diameter. And here's a little trick when dealing with straight edges. Simply dab at one end of the edge and while holding the shift key, dab at the other end and it will remove everything in between. Let's just fix the other side using that shift key technique. Now we have that perfect selection. We're going to invert the mask so everything but the phone box is selected. Now we can intersect that mask with a linear gradient. Drag down from the top of the image to where you think the mist would be in your image. Mine is about there. So let's just zoom in a bit so we can see the effect properly. Now using the curve tool, drag the black point almost up to the top. Where you adjust to is a matter of artistic choice, but an output of around 200 is good for this image. Now there is a slight problem with the wall to the left. In reality, the phone box and the wall are on the same plane and closer objects wouldn't be affected by mist. So using the subtract tool once again, and not forgetting to keep auto mask ticked, I'll run the cursor along the edge of the wall. The foliage will select much better because we have auto mask checked. Then by turning off auto mask, we can tidy up the rest of the wall. Now we could leave it there, but realistically mist tends to collect in layers. So going back to our mist effect layer, I'll choose add and with the brush tool, you'll want to reduce down the flow and density of this tool. Now we can gradually and subtly paint a few layers of mist with a fairly small brush. 
And we've gone from a flat, oversaturated landscape scene to a moody scene with contrast, mist, and that color separation using intersected masks and curves. So if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel, that would really help me out as a content creator. And if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up by hitting that like button. That would be awesome. I'll see you on the flip side.